Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Anderson from Kellogg Community College. We're going to be looking today at more rationals. This is the first of two videos to deal with rational addition and subtraction. Um, I also would say that I kind of like to take all the subtraction problems and right at the start make them into addition problems. So when you see a subtraction problem you can do a little swipe swipe technique which makes the problem equivalent by adding a negative. You only have to add a negative to one part of the fraction, not both, and I usually choose the numerator since we don't want the denominator to be more complicated than it needs to be. When adding fractions we always try to get a common denominator and in this case we're going to be dealing with more than just a integer. Uh, for the denominator. We're going to be dealing with um, terms that have numbers and letters in them and sometimes binomials. For this first video though we are going to just open the door slightly to the binomials at the end of our six exercises but we're going to do a little warm-up here to show you how um, this is going to go um, and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, look at the denominator and try to de find any excluded values. These are values that um, if I plug into my x they would make a division of zero error. So in the denominator here I have an x and a 3x and immediately I know that if I plug a zero in for either the x or the 3 of x uh, that would give me a division of zero error. Um, it, this is important for a future section of our rational chapter together when we're actually solving for x with rationals um, that we look at excluded values. So the more we do this now the less we have um, trouble later. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at the first fraction as 6 over x and say to myself, what would be a common denominator between x and 3 of x, or x and 3x, excuse me? Um, and that answer for the lowest common denominator is 3x. So to get a common denominator, I would multiply the left side by 1. Now that's not a, just a normal one, because multiplying by 1 keeps the number exactly the same. But what I'm going to do is multiply the first number by 3 over 3. And that is technically 1, which keeps the number the same, but it makes the top 3 times bigger, so that would be 18, and the bottom 3 times bigger, which is 3x. Now I have 18 over 3x plus a negative 4 over 3x, and now I can combine them under one denominator of 3x because I have a common denominator. When you add and subtract um, rationals or any fraction you keep the denominator the same and the numerator is the part that actually gets shifted or added or subtracted so the 14 over 3x is my final answer to the problem so um, keep that in mind as we go through uh, the next six examples as they get ever more increasingly difficult um, uh, that we only add the or subtract the numerators once we get a common denominator now we look at this first of six problems the first problem here has a denominator of 9x, 3x, and 4x squared. I can instantly see that the excluded value is going to be 0 because we do not want our denominator to be uh, 0 because of division of 0 error. But now I have to decide, okay, I've got a 9, a 3, and a 4. What's the, common, what's the lowest common number that 9 and 3 and 4 all make? Um, in fact, that's quite a big number. The number is 36. So I have to make the 9, the 3, and the 4 into a 36, and at the same time, consider that each of them has an x, and 1 is an x squared. What is the lowest common denominator of x, x, and x squared? And that happens to be x squared. And that's because you can build up an x and an x to be an x squared by multiplying by x, and we don't really want the x squared to be any bigger. So I'm going to multiply each of these by a large 1 and these rectangles represent multiplying by 1 and in fact I've seen them in books and texts uh, that actually you know kind of stylistically puts a little 1 and a, a foot at the bottom there and that you know looks like a 1 but um, essentially we're going to use rectangles to represent multiplying by 1. So the first fraction uh, the 4 over 9x I'm going to multiply that by uh, 4x because that would make the denominator 36x squared. Oh, I just wrote a 3 because I said 36x squared out loud. Okay, and the second one, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by uh, 12x because the 12x multiplied by the 3x would then make a 36x squared. And for this last problem, I only have to multiply by 9 over 9 because that way the, nine, the, 40, the 4x squared becomes uh, 36x squared. So here's what I have. I've got a 4x times 4, so that's 16x over 36x squared. 
plus 24x, that's a 4, sorry, but that looks a little bad there, over 36x squared, minus, or I can add a negative here, um, plus a negative 9 over 36x squared. And, and from this moment on, once I get this common denominator, I'm just going to write the common denominator once. Um, I'm going to kind of skip the step of writing the denominator every time and just, you know, assume that I, I did my calculations correct and now I just have to kind of combine my numerators. The 26, or sorry, the 16 and the 24 make a total of 40. Minus 9 and that is my final answer for the second of, or first of the six formal problems we're going to do. Okay, so let's do um, a little bit of uh, excluded values. X and Y cannot be zero here, uh, because if I plug zero into X or Y, I would get a division of zero error. Now, here's something that I strongly urge you to do from the beginning of the problem. You'll know that this is a subtraction problem. And I, I without teaching anyone anything from this, most everybody makes a mistake of subtracting the 3x and not the negative 3. Because if you subtract, you're going to have to subtract the whole numerator of the second fraction. So that means that this 3 gets subtracted, but this minus 3, if it is subtracted, it should become positive. By me changing this problem from a subtraction to adding a negative and distributing the negative to all parts of the numerator, I'm going to make fewer mistakes in the long run. Now, actually getting a common denominator here is pretty swell because you've got x squared y and xy, so all I need is a common denominator of x squared y, so I'm going to multiply this by 1, which is going to be x over x. That builds this up to be an x squared y, and that's also an x squared y. And then we're going to do our little distribution here like that. So now we're going to have our x plus 1 from the first fraction, plus a negative 3x squared. And then the jumper cable in here is positive 3x all over x squared y. You can see how not having to write all these out, I've just done it over one common denominator. Well, I'm going to reorder the numerator here, so my first problem is going to be negative 3x squared. My x and 3x make a total of 4x, and my one whole number left is there. I choose my problem in standard form, or from degree order of highest degree to lowest, and because uh, this is the power of 2, power of 1, power of 0, x squared y in the denominator. And that is the second of my six formal problems that we're going to do here. So. Um, let me kind of scan down a little bit. I keep saying six formal problems, but now I realize this worksheet only has five at the bottom. So I'll stop saying six. There we go. There's the last three problems we're going to do here for this worksheet video. Um, okay, so let's start up again by getting rid of that pesky subtraction sign. So here we go. I'm going to make that an addition, which makes that a minus and a plus. This is distributing the negative to the two parts of the numerator's binomial. And uh, now I get to kind of come up with my excluded value, which is 0, because plugging that in would give me a division of 0 error. And now what I'll do is figure out what is my common denominator between 4 and 6. And now some of you might have thought 24, but 12 is the better answer. If you use 24, we might have to do some reducing at the end, and that would make things a little bit more challenging. Now I'm going to look at my x and my x squared, and there we go, there's my common denominator. So I would multiply this by 1, and 3x will do the trick, because 3x times 4x is 12x squared, and multiplying top and bottom by 2. That's going to give me 12x squared there. So 3x squared plus 6x is going to be my distribution of that first 1 into that binomial, and then we'll do some distribution there, which is going to be negative 2x plus 4. All right, so now I'm going to put this all over 12x squared and then combine my numerator into three terms in standard form, 3x squared plus 4x plus 4, all divided by 12x squared. For this next problem coming up, um, again, let's get rid of that pesky subtraction sign. For this next problem that's come up here, I've got x plus 3 and x minus 4. Hmm. What's interesting about this is that I think a lot of students may decide, well, what I'll do is just, you know, add, you know, 
uh, negative 7 to this 3 and make it a negative 4. Um, you can't do that. You can't actually modify a binomial with addition or subtraction that way. Um, because as we said in a previous video, you got to imagine these having shields on them. And they're not affected by monomials or other um, different binomials. So you, ha you can't actually modify them. So the lowest common denominator is going to be actually both of them. So if you can, uh, and another kind of way that I've explained this is if you can imagine these being two children. One children has an x, plus, one child has an x plus three, the other child has an x minus four. And in the interest of being fair, you just have to make sure that each child gets the same toys. So you're going to go to the boy, the toy store, and you're going to um, purchase for this first child here an x minus four over x minus four. This keeps the kid the same, but he now or she now has this. Um, common denominator as the other one because the other one's going to get an x plus 3 and an x plus 3 toy as well. Multiplying by 1 keeps the kid the same and um, you know gives him or her that toy in the denominator. Please understand that this is um, these kids don't share well so um, hopefully you'll have fewer problems in the future. Now before we go into the rest of the work here I do have to talk about excluded values which means for the first denominator of x plus 3 my x cannot be equal to negative 3. Because if I plug a negative 3 into x, then, well, lo and behold, I'm going to have a division of 0 error. And for the next fraction, uh, x cannot be equal to 4. Okay, so we've got our excluded values that will help us in the future when we solve for x using rationals. And here we are going to do some distribution. So 2x minus 8, and some more distribution here, minus 7x minus 21. All right, so we're going to do that all over our common denominator of x minus 4, x plus 3. Um, there's been some talk a little bit in class about should we FOIL that back in, and it's really not necessary. In fact, you always should be diligent to look at the numerator, see if there's something you can simplify, and there isn't, because 2 minus 7 is negative 5, negative 8 minus 21 is negative 29, and yeah, that's not going to simplify with either of these binomials. And if it did, they'd have to be a perfect match, and they're nowhere close. So for our final problem today, our sixth problem that we're going to do, um, we're going to look at our common denominator, which happens to be one of each toy, 2x plus 3, and x minus 2. And then we'll look at our excluded values. And this first excluded value is a little interesting, because I do want to talk again about how we find excluded values. You, your, your denominator can never be equal to 0. So by setting it equal to zero, or not equal to not zero here, or what is that, not equal to zero, you're going to subtract three from both sides. And then you get two x is equal to negative three. And then divide by two, divide by two, x is equal to negative three halves, or negative 1.5. And you can use the same logic to look at the next problem and, and say if I set that equal, or set it not equal to zero, I can then add two to both sides and get x is not equal to positive two. Um, I call students who actually can do these really quickly in their head um, students who have leveled up, like in a video game, because they say, oh, the pattern is the opposite of this number divided by the first. So this would be negative 3 halves, this would be positive 2 over 1, and yeah, that's, that's the pattern. Uh, that kind of gets you out of doing some of this busy side work here. Um, but again, knowing where it, came from, where it comes from is really important. So let's uh, finish this problem up. On the left-hand side, i got to multiply by x minus 2. I liked how there was no subtraction problem here. It's kind of a nice ending to our little work video here. Uh, 2x plus 3 is going to be what we multiply by this one. So pew pew. That gets uh, distributed to the inside. So 3x squared minus 6x. Pew pew. And so we have minus 14x plus 21 all over the binomial of 2x plus 3 and the other binomial of x minus 2. And no, we would, again, would not want to FOIL that in here. So let's, uh, let's uh, combine this stuff here. So 3x squared minus 6x minus 14, that's going to be 3x squared. Um, wow, why do I think I have screwed this up? Oh, yeah, 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 that's a plus. <laughs> that's a plus. And let's see, that's a plus. That is a, OK, so that's going to give me an answer of 8x. And that's going to give me plus 21. All right, sorry for the little mix up there. 2x plus 3 and x minus 2. All right, well, that is the first of two videos about adding and subtracting rational numbers. Thank you for watching.